gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. Underneath his creeper bridge, hoping goats will cross. Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge, I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He's even dumber than Mickey Cost. I right, hello and welcome to episode 54 of the Tech Bytes Audio Cast. It's Wednesday, the 6th of July, and uh, we're back very quickly with another episode because we've got quite a bit to talk about. So, just myself and Roy will crack straight on. And Roy, I believe you're going to kick us off with the first topic of the night. Right, so a couple of hours ago, I uh, was notified by a person in IRC about the uh, uh, a report in Reuters, actually not a report in Reuters, but actually quite a few people linked into it, uh, and it's about Samsung and uh, and Microsoft, which is a pair of companies very close together because of the RM deals and all kinds of other deals they had uh, with memory productions and all kinds of stuff uh, going way back uh, Samsung, I think, is about five times bigger than Microsoft in terms of the uh, the number of employees, or uh, just kind of estimating the numbers here, uh, because it's an actual producing company. And as you know, Microsoft is a uh, increasingly a non-practicing company. They try to make money by licensing things, including uh, software patents now. So Samsung and Microsoft signed a patent deal in 2007. Uh, which refer to, in quotes, Linux-related, uh, uh, Linux-related something. Uh, not, not something, but Linux-related was the phrase which indicated back then that Samsung was the first, uh, device maker to pay Microsoft in some ways for Linux patents. Um, that was after, or just around the same time that Zandros and, uh, Linspire, uh, or following suit uh, with Novell's deal in 2006. And the news is, the, the thing in Reuters, uh, indicates that the uh, that Microsoft wants Samsung to pay uh, $15 per sale of, uh, I'm not sure if it's just phones, but it's just basically Android uh, devices, and that's probably where the margins are quite thin to begin with. Uh, and I don't think that even Windows Phone 7 is going to cost this much to license. Uh, and the report says that Samsung is like, perhaps willing to pay about 10. And that's, uh, relating to something we heard before, uh, about HTC, uh, allegedly paying $5 based, I think, on some, uh, person in the banking industry saying something based on some, um, uh, unsourced quote somewhere. So, um, and to me, it's troubling because this is this is something I've dedicated about four and a half, five years of my life in terms of the uh, work I've been doing in uh, the Boy Group of Health first and then Tech Rights and um, trying to ensure that not just Linux but in general software developers and people who write their own code are not going to be the subject of litigation and extortion and taxation by companies that don't contribute a single line of code to their program, uh, you yet actually want to extract payments from your clients. They don't even go to you, they go to your client. Uh, in this case, uh, Google is making the platform with help from the FOSS community, which is very thankful, I believe, generally speaking. You know, the Linux kernel seems to be kind of okay with Android if you consider the fact that uh, Linus Torvalds has got a Android phone, uh, so that's the That'd be Motorola with Android. Um, and Microsoft is attacking uh, the Google uh, maintained platform by going after the manufacturers who don't have much of an incentive to actually uh, fight back and to take things to court and try to invalidate and find out what patents are involved. So Microsoft is finding a sort of a loophole to do a blackmail uh, using software patents or at least the, uh, the deterrent of software patents. Haven't many, actually bought many of them. So recently they got the Nortel thing for about four billion, and they bought it as part of a cartel of companies. Uh, so they get their hands on patents and weapons for extorting the competition by basically just throwing a few 
uh, bits of money on a pile of so-called knowledge. So kind of buying knowledge or buying monopolies and then using it aggressively as, uh, as expected. Well, I mean, for me, it has several issues in and, and this whole story and it, it's fascinating I don't mean that in a in a pleasant sense uh, it's rather a disturbing story uh, with $15 uh, for each Android phone if that is indeed correct um, what, I've, what I have found over the years is especially in the smartphone market you have many many users who really don't consider such issues when making a, uh, a smartphone purchase they use a phone they don't maybe have an interest in tech and I think we've gone over before about the average user who maybe buys or uses a piece of software or hardware for a specific purpose and pays very little regards to things working behind uh, behind the scenes um, the problem is with this fifteen dollars uh, per Android phone is that the cost of this uh, this I don't want to say the word blackmail, I think. Uh, let's use the word for the purposes of this comment, extortion. Um, will be passed on somewhere, um, and usually it will be to the end user. And this is one of the reasons why average users and people that haven't traditionally thought of such uh, such issues in the past maybe should start thinking about them now. It's the cost, this $15 cost, will be passed on to somebody, and most likely it will be the end user. The other issue that this type of behavior has uh, when Microsoft does this type of thing is that it makes uh, manufacturers less encouraged to go with uh, alter alternate products to Microsoft. Now, Microsoft would love you to use Windows Phone 7 if we look at the sales figures and the people writing about Windows Phone 7. I think it's safe to say that not many people have got the phone and not many people are very interested in the Windows Phone 7 platform, um, which then adds another disadvantage to people that it forces users down a certain route if manufacturers aren't prepared to put Android on the phone because of fear of what Microsoft may or may not do or indeed a, a shrink to a, a smaller profit margin so that that's two detrimental um, effects it has on the market but I think Rusty made a very good point uh, a couple of shows ago when he was saying that uh, the why isn't Microsoft and why isn't anybody questioning Microsoft about uh, going after the source if Microsoft is convinced that Android infringes on these patents that it holds why isn't it going after the source of Android which would be Google yeah. no, that's what uh, Oracle was doing uh, I'm not going to commend Oracle for doing that but at least Oracle putting the is, is, is not trying to use a loophole uh, mm. in this case um, and, and I believe uh, we just heard about more patents being apparently invalidated or on the route to being invalidated. So even Oracle's attempt to use software patents against Android, uh, even like I think it's like 21 or 22 patents, they start to completely be destroyed because Google is willing to put in the money to have them uh, investigated. Mm. Uh, things like prior art and whatever. So. It also shows the weakness of software patents once you actually put some scrutiny to them. Yeah. I was, uh, I was, the, I was also, just to very, very briefly interrupt as well, just sort of relevant this. I was reading a, an article, it might have been a comment on somebody else's article, and it made a very valid point. If Microsoft were ever to go directly after Google and actually state which or any company and state exactly how Android is infringing on Microsoft Patents, you would get a whole host of people with expertise in that area um, from the open source community who would be scrutinizing exactly Microsoft's claims to see if there's any validity to them. Yeah. And, or you uh, can work around them yeah. as well. And which would be another fear for Microsoft, presumably, uh, that they would have hundreds of thousands of uh, very clued up people going over what their claims are to see where the uh, flaws and where the holes are in in their um, in their claim. Yeah. It, it's a very sad state of affairs now whereby if Microsoft had produced its own successful platform and maybe Microsoft with its Windows Phone 7 was sitting where Android is today, we probably wouldn't be seeing these uh, these types of actions. And it's very sad that it seems... Apple's doing it to an extent as well. Because well, yeah, Apple, Apple's... Is, Apple, is, Apple is doing well in terms of it's doing well in terms of financial terms, but if you look at the trends, they're moving downwards in some, mm. to some degree. So yes. Android, it's, it seems to them like the writings are on the wall. Uh, either they start to license iOS to more companies, or they basically repeat the same mistakes they did in the 80s by suing companies and trying to have complete control of everything, and everyone just moves to Windows and to other things uh, instead. Uh, well, a few, few uh, quick points I wanted to make, though, is... Uh, I'm not sure we spoke yesterday about the Ace, not the Acer. Uh, there is a spin-off from Acer, uh, company A turns out to be quite a big company, uh, 30,000 employees making uh, uh, Chromebooks now and things like, you know, Chrome, Chrome OS and uh, perhaps that.